If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at proofs by contradiction, which is an astoundingly powerful proof technique. And it's actually really, really simple to understand. So let's say that we want to, we want to prove something. We want to prove that some statement P is true. Some statement P. And this can have variables in it, but it doesn't actually matter. What we want to do with proof by contradiction is to suppose that P is false. And then from that, from that supposition alone, we derive a contradiction, something that cannot possibly be true. So it might actually be really hard to prove that the original thing is true, but it's significantly easier to show that um, if it's false, then that's not possible. So instead of directly proving something, we instead prove that the opposite of the statement cannot possibly be true, the negation of the statement. So let's do some examples of this. So uh, I'm gonna have a claim here, and this is actually very famous proof. You've probably seen it before, but it's really nice. That the square root of two, the, the number square root of two, which is approximately 1.41, 1 etc., is not in the set of rational numbers. So this says that um, I can't write the square root of 2 as the uh, division of some integer over another one. So in other words, this is the same thing as saying there, there are no oops, integers such that oh, I should write it as no integers p and q such that p over q is equal to the square root of 2. That, that's just the equivalent way of formulating the statement. So let's prove this by contradiction. So by contradiction. So uh, we'll just assume that this statement actually is false, that it actually is rational. Okay. So let's change to red. So assume uh, square root of 2 is in Q, and uh, let P and Q be integers such that uh, P over Q is equal to the square root of 2. Okay, uh, that, that's just uh, based on our assumption here that square root of 2 is rational, so there must be two integers for which one over the other is equal to the square root of 2. Okay. Um, what, we can, what we're going to actually do here is we're going to assume that these two numbers have no factors in common. So uh, what I mean by that is, like if we have 2 over 4, uh, this is obviously not equal to square root of 2, but it's just an example. Um, these two numbers have 2 in common. So I can reduce this to be 1 over 2. And I can't reduce this anymore. So uh, what, what we typically call this is reduced form. Okay, so like I can't uh, divide anything out of both numbers simultaneously. Okay, so let's actually run with this. And what I typically do, or I encourage people to do, whenever you have some, oops, whenever you have some type of equation like this, just play around with it. Uh, just mess with it a little bit and see if you can find anything interesting about it. So we can't really do anything interesting other than multiplying Q on both sides. So let's do that. So we get P is equal to Q times the square root of 2. And uh, we can't really do anything else other than that, other than maybe squaring both sides to get rid of the square roots. Whenever you have square roots in equations, the typical tendency is you want to get rid of the square roots. So let's square both sides, and we get p squared is equal to q squared times 2. Okay. 
So what does that actually tell us right here? Well, what this tells us right here is that p must be even because q is an integer, squaring it is still an integer, times 2 makes it an even integer. So this tells us that p is even. So if it's even, then it's 2 times some number. So p is equal to 2 times k for some integer k. Okay, for some k and z. So then let's just substitute this back, 2 times k, back into this equation. So we're just rewriting the equation in uh, multiple ways. So 2k whole thing squared is equal to uh, q squared times 2. And what we have is 4k squared on the left, q squared times 2 on the right. But we notice that there's a 4 and a 2 here. So let's take the 2 away by dividing 2 on both sides. So what we're going to get is 2k squared is equal to q squared. And then here's where the contradiction happens. We notice that q squared is, uh, oh, uh, I should say, um, I, I did a step here I, sh I should have clarified. This says that p squared is even, but that also implies that p is even. Why? Because if you have an odd number and you square it, you get an odd number. So this is also true here. What we can see is that uh, q is also even. But that means that p over q can, uh, p and q can be both divided by 2, but that contradicts the fact that the, they have no factors in common. So that actually shows that they actually weren't in reduced form, even though when we started, we assumed that they were. So that is a contradiction. So contradiction. And, and that's all you would need to say at the bottom of the proof. Okay, so this is a lot easier than, um, than proving it directly because how would you be able to show directly that this is not an, a rational number? The only conceivable way is to try every rational number and see if it's equal, and you can't really do that. So it's significantly easier to, sh to look at the uh, negation of the statement and show that it can't possibly happen. So this is saying there are no integers for which it is. So then we, what we do is we look at the negation and we say, oh, let's suppose they are. And we derive a contradiction based on uh, observing something about uh, the fact that if it were rational, we can have the fraction in, in reduced terms. And because of that, uh, we get the contradiction that, in fact, it wasn't in reduced terms, which is a contradiction. Okay, so let's do one more. So uh, this is uh, kind of similar, which is if P and Q are integers, uh, then P squared minus 4Q is not equal to 2. Okay, so again, let's prove this by contradiction because it seems hard to... Uh, prove this directly. I mean, there may be some ways of doing it directly, but it, you wouldn't conceivably have to try every possible integer, which is impossible to do. So let's try to do it by contradiction. So proof by contradiction. So let's say that uh, let... Uh, okay, let me write it this way. So suppose uh, p and q are integers and p squared minus 4q is not, it, sorry, is equal to 2. Okay, so uh, what does that actually tell us here? Well, uh, so again, we have an equation. Let's play around with it. So I don't like this minus sign here, so let's uh, add 4q on the both sides. So what we'll get is p squared is equal to 4q plus 2. So we see something over here. 
kind of like what we saw before, that we can factor the two, uh, a two out. So we get two times two q plus one. And again, we get p squared is even. So this implies that p is even. Okay. So let's say that, let's say that p is equal to two times k for some integer k. So again, we get two k whole thing squared is equal to two times uh, two q plus one. So we get four k squared is equal to, I'm gonna actually uh, factor it out again. So we're gonna get four q plus one. Okay, so then let's actually move the four q back over. So we'll get four k squared minus four, oh, I didn't multiply two there, that was my mistake. So minus four q is equal to two, and we again will uh, get uh, something interesting about this, is that every number, every coefficient here is even, so we can actually divide two on both sides. So let's see. So then we get 2k squared minus 2q is equal to 1, okay? And in fact, here's where the contradiction happens. So what we see here is that this guy is even because it's 2 times some number, and this one is also even because, again, it's 2 times some integer. But and this is the difference of two even numbers, so an even number minus an even one, therefore must be even, but that's a contradiction because one is not even. It's not divisible by two. So, and that gives us the contradiction. Okay, so this is kind of similar in that, uh, to the square root two proof, where we saw that uh, one of the variables was even, so what we did was we just played with it a little bit, and we played with this equation a little bit, and we derived a contradiction based on the fact that one side is even and the other side is uh, not even. And so therefore, they cannot possibly be equal to each other. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about proof by uh, negation in the comments. There are many other links to support the channel such as subscribing and liking the video. It really helps us out, including our Discord server. And as always, I'll see you next time.